me show you a picture of 17-year-old Retia Parsons from Canada. She was allegedly gang raped by four of her classmates. After an 18-month struggle with the fallout, she killed herself last week. And her mom says that it's a growing trend called slut shaming that played a major role in her death. One girl that was her friend put on her status. Uh, sluts need to leave this school anyway. Um, just bullying and boys that she didn't know send her messages. We want to have fun. You did it with my friends. Why don't we get together? It just was nonstop. On the Steubenville and Connecticut football rape cases, the victims were also bullied relentlessly. And it's not just cases of rape. Slut shaming is affecting so many girls across the country. We actually Googled it. And slut shaming is defined as the act of making a woman feel guilty or inferior for engaging in certain sexual behaviors that violate traditional gender expectations. Now, this is uh, not new. But what makes this so worse, guys, is, is social media. I mean, these pictures, this video, it goes viral. Everyone brings a phone to a party nowadays. Well, and it's, it's the rape, Kara, that is so disturbing that these young boys, because I'm raising two boys. And, I, I mean, it hit me the other day. I thought, I'm raising men. I'm not raising two little boys. And I don't understand why these guys are, I mean, that didn't happen when we were growing up like that. I mean, people didn't get gang raped when we were in high school and when we were in school. And these girls are having to face this and the pornography and, and, and it's, girls are experiencing it themselves, too. They're putting themselves out there and exposing themselves and probably in ways they shouldn't, but they don't deserve to be bullied or to, to kill themselves to die for it. Let's get the male perspective, Vinny. I mean, raising boys, we talk about our girls, uh, you know, I mean, we got to talk about the boys yeah, in this situation, do. too, that they have no problem doing this. Yeah, well, what has changed also is, is the social media aspect of it. So, you know, the, the bullying that used to take place face-to-face -face now is taking place, you know, online, mm -hmm. on cell phones, everywhere else. So the question is, how do you stop that? How do you prevent that? Well, first, every parent should have control over their child's Absolutely. cell phone. So I, I think there's, a, there's an obligation on the parents of the bullies to know what their children are okay. doing on those cell phones. Now, how, how do you get the attention of these parents? Um, if you're a victim, you know, I'm a lawyer, so I always look at it from that perspective. How do I make some noise, put people on notice that things are going to happen. You know, if my child's being bullied, I'm going to put the school on notice, right? That, that you have created an unsafe environment for my child. And the way to do that, get it in writing. You Document put, everything. You put something in writing, and it's whether it's the, the principal, CC the superintendent, CC the board of education, you will get attention. But you've got to put these things in writing. Just a little meeting with the school counselor is not going to get it done. You know, I'll tell you someone who's getting a lot of attention uh, drawn to this subject, Liz Securo. Um, Liz was actually raped in college some 20 years ago, and she now tours the country talking to high school and college students. Liz uh, dialed in, uh, is on the phone with us now. Liz, you know, what exactly do you say to these girls and these boys about their behavior and the Internet when you speak to them? Well, I think, and uh, thank you for having me. It's uh, a pleasure. Sorry, I be here via Skype. Um, I think because I, I'm coming at it from the side of a victim and a survivor, and a parent and an expert, it's sort of a cornucopia for me. Um, and and I, I sort of blanch at the word behavior in that I think what happened to me is exactly what is happening to these young women and men um, without the social media. I think that had my case been when it had been and social and it had been present day, it would have been just as disastrous. To this sure. day, even though I go around and I speak with these people, I get nasty tweets and emails and all sorts of things. And I'm in my 40s, you know, and, well, and still talking about why were you at that party? Why were you drinking? And it's like, again, oh it's this whole victim blaming, slut shaming thing. And so I don't know how to answer the question whether as a parent or as a victim, I think that it's just got to stop. I mean, these just, I, I mean, certainly. But the internet I, I, is like definitely a problem. I, I mean, in high school, boys called girls doorknobs. And if you made your way around, everybody had a turn, oh you gosh. got a doorknob, you know, by your locker, by your car. Okay? Now it's the internet. Yeah, it's but, pictures. But, but, it's, 
but Kara, do we do we train do we t train and teach? I like what she said about training and teaching these girls and even our boys too about what being a victim is before they become a victim. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like we need to call it out before it happens, so that you know the ramifications or you know your consequences if you participate in this kind of behavior. You know, well, define what a victim is before you become one. Not Does only that, make that sense? but I mean, when you talk about social media, it's I think it's. To the point of Vinny, it's not like you're face to face with them, so you don't have that immediate well, that's just consequence. Such a coward way and that's of why bullying. we need I don't know yeah. how to teach our kids that what you put in writing means just as much as what you might do. If you wouldn't say that to somebody's face, if you wouldn't go up and ask them that question, don't put it in writing it's because you know punishment. I was looking at it's what you're it's saying like that's what you right. Did. All right, for the girl who's getting drunk, mm -hmm, you're saying mm -hmm. she needs to understand what could happen if Hello. you get drunk right. and people could take advantage of you. Right. For for the boys, when you see a girl that's drunk, you don't rape her. You right. know, you you call her mother, you give her a glass of water, you drive her home. Thing. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's a soul thing. That's a heart thing. Our consciousness and and, and our goodness have been seared. Because we have seen so much on yeah. social media, Vinny, like yeah. you said earlier, that people are not taking responsibility as just as humanitarians, as people. Um, I need to interrupt here, too, because I, I think so many people are all worked up in a lather and teaching us about how girls shouldn't be getting drunk. I guarantee you, in this case in Canada and in Steubenville, that the alleged rapists we're also intoxicated. I don't know mm. why the blame is always put That's on the right. Yeah, right. Yeah. No, That's no, right. point, the point, problem. point well made. Well, well take, a look, take a look at this. Meet Jessie Logan, 18 years old. She was teased, harassed, called a slut. She tried to get help from high school guidance counselors, police, but the shaming never stopped. So Jessica Logan came home and she killed herself. Hope Witzel, 13, signed a no-harm contract at school. She actually agreed on paper that if she wanted to harm herself, she would tell someone. Well, that contract ended up in the trash, and Hope ended up dying by suicide. Then Felicia Garcia, 15, her school administrators also knew of this sex bullying that was going up, even set up a mediation session with a counselor and one of the 17-year-old boys that was involved. Well, that didn't work. Felicia, in front of all her classmates, jumped in front of a train. Um, yeah, I hear the gasping in the studio. Vinny, you know, these, these pictures and video that are posted why aren't those people held accountable for that well the law it only takes a while for the law to catch up with the technology and there are new cyber bullying laws that are being set up in different jurisdictions but it's taking too much time if why? i if i get the hold up it, it it just takes time it, it, and the, the technology is always ahead of it and the, the law is always behind and you're trying to catch up you know there's a you know there's a balance between freedom of speech versus what is harassing what is stalking and they've had to make adjustments. Here's what I would advise, though. And, and you saw in these cases that you just described that the, the children were trying to do something. The school was trying to do something. Well, you've got to jump way out. If you're a parent, you've got to jump way out. Put them on notice that they are liable, that they are not creating a safe environment for my child. You do that right away and say it's not acceptable. It is unacceptable. And, I mean... It, it seemed they You're were trying to do something. parents need to be well, then, way more yeah. aggressive. Proactive. Yeah. Aggressive and proactive right. and put people on notice that they are liable, that they are not doing what they are supposed to do to keep my child safe. That will wake them up and say, oh, my goodness, question, we are going to end up being liable. The squeaky whale gets the all. Exactly. I mean, the louder you bark, the, exactly. the more you're going to pay attention. And I think as a parent, I mean, that's, that's yeah. uh, what do you do in the meantime? Because these girls are killing themselves. But I think the, part of the problem is how do you, how do you break that? cycle of everybody who's how do you break that line of everybody that's following you you know i was watching something on npr and she said somebody you know on facebook a boyfriend in ninth grade posted something it was on facebook uh twitter a bunch of other things in 43 minutes had 443 likes and 261 wow. comments how do you break that once it's out if you come across anyone expressing that they may hurt themselves want to hurt themselves on any of your social media sites here's how you can help them get help urge them to call this lifeline the number is right there on the screen 1-800-273-TALK